Hi friends. Could it be multiple years since I've done a book haul? Probably. One of the things I was most proud of and I set out very intentionally to do in 2023 was calm it the fuck down with going and buying books. It is actually a little bit ridiculous how accessible my local library is. Anytime I felt inspired to get new books, I pretended that my library was a bookstore. Honestly, I'm learning that I kind of prefer to read that way, especially now that I've read over 1,000 books in my lifetime. A lot of things go in one ear and out the other, so owning them for me is not a priority. Clearly, I still own like 300 out of the 1,000. Honestly, I'm wondering if I can just downsize three of these shelves into two. You're not here to talk about that. You're here for me to tell you everything I got in the year, so long story short, I'm just proud that everything that I got this year can be put in one video for the entire year and not like monthly or weekly book hauls. 95% of the books that I got, is that allowed? I didn't even know he could do that, okay. 95% of the books that I got were all from my library bookstore. I volunteer there every month. Just off the bat, some things that I recall that were some standout finds. Just this past weekend, I found a hardcover new copy of Beartown by Frederick Bachman. <laughs> Big recommendation to you is to not get cats. Really the only thing I know about this is it's very wintry. I think it's a hockey book set in like a small town. And this has been on my TBR for a couple years. So I thought that was a really good find. Again, it was like a dollar. And you're gonna have to take a shot now every time I tell you that something was a dollar or free. One other thing that I picked up this year from that little library store is like volumes two through five of the Princess Diaries. I read the first one last year or maybe even a couple years ago and loved it. And now the more I look at these, I'm like, I could just read them from the library because I'm not sure that I care to own them. I'm reading these for the first time when I decided to pick them up. So it's not like I have any childhood attachment to them. It definitely feels like you're watching the movie when you're reading them. It's just that 2000s era corniness and Mia's narration style is so exasperated and very much like that 12 year old, this is the end of the world kind of feelings when it comes to boys and looks and schools. I just thought it was so fun and I can't believe I found these for this price. This one was also from a library book sale. 25 cents for a YA hardcover. It's Eat Your Heart Out by Kelly DeVos, which is a book about a girl who goes to a fat camp, but then there's also an apocalypse and like zombies. I'm always looking for some non-contemporary options with fat main characters. I've heard of this one and couldn't pass it up for that price. I also found a paperback copy of Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson in my library for like 25 cents. I can't get over this. This book I don't think will be my cup of tea, which is why I'm nervous. It's a YA like mystery and this is also like a four or five book series at this point but it's set in Vermont. I think this hits like dark academia vibes when people put it on those kind of reading lists. I see it so much for me it almost feels like a like hallmark YA classic. I don't know just wanted to give it a shot. Again can't really lose for that price. Hold on my battery's about to die. And we're back. Where was I? At different points in the year I also found some arcs in this library bookstore. I think the more significant one is Babel by R.F. Kuang. Been hearing things about this all year, was very curious about it. Obviously it's a very large book. I did read The Poppy War, don't remember anything, but I know I kind of liked it. I'm just very, very interested in this based on what I've heard of it and I feel like I can't go wrong. Like this has to be at least a four star book for me. I'll probably read this as an arc and then pass it on to someone because it may or may not be highly sought after. But yeah, that's fun. Like historical fiction, anti-colonialism, I know nothing else. And then speaking of knowing nothing, um, this is a title I recognize just because the author is super popular right now. I don't know how to say her name 100%, Otessa Moshfe. This is the same author that's pretty TikTok viral for doing like, what's the book with the, the art of rest and relaxation? I've heard that this book is just kind of a mind fuck. I love books that make no sense with characters that you're not sure who to root for. Like this almost reminds me of, what's that book about the merman that everyone hates by Melissa Broder? The Pisces? Obviously I haven't read this one yet, but that's what it gives me on the onset and I love the Pisces. So we'll see. And then a couple of things that I found free, either from neighbors giving them away on Facebook or little free libraries. A Man Called Oh by Frederick Bachman. So I already mentioned I've got other books by him. This is obviously his most popular one. I also got The Midnight Library by Matt Haig for free, which this has been on my TBR for so long, so I'm so excited about that. I've read a lot of other books by Matt Haig, mostly his nonfiction, and the one fiction book that I did try to read I wasn't a huge fan of. I'm interested to see if this will be any better. 
<laughs> than the ones I've tried in the past. Obviously, it's very viral. Not entirely sure what this plot entails, but I, it feels like a book that would be good for readers to read. And Matt Haig typically deals with discussions about mental health, so I'm expecting something about depression and or anxiety in this. Goodness gracious cats, can you tell it's nearing 5 p.m. for dinner? Another little free library find was My Antonia by Willa Cather. This is a author from the 20th century. She writes like characters in Nebraska, so very Midwestern mother vibes. I did read one of Willa Cather's other books. I forget what it is, but it was like a World War I fiction title for college. I enjoyed it. This is her most popular work. I just remember picking this up from the Little Free Library and then sitting on a bench afterward and starting it and loving the setting of it. It's just like that slow, almost like the Dust Bowl, middle of nowhere cornfields kind of dreary setting. I don't know what to expect, but I just like this cover and the idea of it, so. I almost didn't mention this one because it's in my get rid of pile that's on this shelf, but I also did get Tess of the Road from a Little Free Library this year. I don't think I'm gonna read it, so this is the end of this section. Okay, I did buy a couple of things for full price or close to full price this year. Here's the four books that are in that category. I did pick up This Woman Kingdom and also These Infinite Threads. This is gonna be, I think like a five or six book series, but it's Tatamafi's Persian inspired fantasy series. So it starts with This Woman Kingdom. I did read both of these already, didn't love them. This one especially is just really long winded and kind of boring. The thing that I've noticed about Tahara's writing more recently is she goes a lot more into thoughts and feelings than action. So a lot of this book is internal monologue and even at the end of this book when you're like oh my god this is gonna take off and be amazing and then you dive into book two, most of this book is still like characters thinking about things and not actually doing anything or solving anything. So this just felt like filler material and it was so weird. There was only like one scene in this book that delivered the angst and the plot and the drama that I thought it would. So both of these were like three stars for me. Yeah I picked those two up this year to support my girl. This book was actually a gift and I didn't pay for it, so maybe it shouldn't be in this category, but when I was in Milwaukee visiting my best friend earlier this year for my birthday, she decided that she'd buy me a book. I chose out The Fine Print by Lauren Asher, which I'm nervous about because I'm kind of convinced I'm not gonna like it. I'm so nervous. This is actually a book that my best friend Shelby really enjoyed this year. It's a trilogy, I think, following different men. This one is like the CEO of a alternate world world equivalent of Disney. So he runs like this theme park. I'm really nervous about workplace romances. I typically do not like them because I want to read to escape work and not think more about working. Shelby loved this and Shelby and I have very similar pickiness with romance. I just haven't read romance it feels like in a while. I've been so into fantasy at the moment that even if this is corny I think it'll be a good change of pace. But yeah, picked that up this year. And then I went to a book signing for Cassandra Clare, met her for the first time and also got a copy of Stormcatcher. This is probably the most expensive book I got this year. It was $35 or maybe it was just 30. I don't know. I definitely paid full price for this. Let me just say that. And it's an adult hardback. This is her new non Shadowhunter related fantasy book. I have a vlog where my friend John Paul explains it really well. We both went to this signing together. From what I can remember of what he said, it's a world where everybody is pansexual. There's someone who works for like a circus kind of thing. Someone who has to pretend to be the prince. And there's different like races of people in this world and there's some political drama because all the different races. I think John Paul finished it or is reading it and says it's okay. I'm just really curious to see what a non Shadowhunter book will be like from her because she's been doing the same shit, no offense, for like 20 years. I'll probably read this in 2030, we'll see. And then my final category is books that were given to me or friends and family were so gracious to provide it for my reading pleasure. One birthday present I received for my friend Sonia this year was Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon, which is I think the first book in a series. I love Rebecca Weatherspoon, so as soon as I opened this, I was like, yep, five stars. Say less. Gordo enjoyed it too. Anyway, this is a series that's all about romances with black women as the main characters. I've read a lot of Rebecca's books and I love them all. I think she hits this really fine balance of humor that's not overly corny and like realistic but also steamy relationships. She's just incredible. If you have never read something by Rebecca Weatherspoon, even though they look like self-published and awful, they're some of my favorite romances in the entire world, as evidenced by how many sticky tabs I have in this one. Oh, this is the second book in a series, because the first one is called 
for so long I said Rafe. I've been told I don't think it's supposed to be Rafe, Rafi maybe, Raf, whatever Raphael, however you pronounce the nickname for Raphael, I'm sure someone will tell me. This is the sequel about a girl whose aunt dies, so she goes up to her aunt's house in this small town to figure out everything, and her aunt's last dying wish is for her and this guy from the town to get to know each other, so she's like, you can only get your inheritance and everything if you two get married. It's so tea. It's so good. Mason, who's the guy, is bisexual and he's plus sized. I'm talking about this like I'm not gonna put it in my favorite books of the year video, so you'll hear this all again if you watch all my videos, but it's just such a good book. It talks about grief, but then it's also funny. Like, I was crying. I was laughing. This book really hit everything for me, so long, long story just to say that Sonya knows my reading tastes well and thank you for this book. Loved it. This next one's kind of a funny one, but my grandma had this old, old, old copy of a book just sitting around her house and she was like, oh, Whitney's a reader, I'll send that to her. It's so decrepit, it's falling apart. I have put this on my TBR because I kind of want to read it and see what the deal is. It's called English Orphans by Mary J. Holmes. There's no date in this, I guarantee it's from the early 20th century maybe, but I started reading chapter one and so far it's weird. It's like a 14 year old kissing on a nine year old. Maybe that video will never see the light of day where I decide to read this whole thing. Speaking of grandma, she also sent me almost first edition of To Kill a Mockingbird. It doesn't have a dust jacket, but it's a 1960 copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. I've been meaning and meaning to reread this. I think I got rid of my old high school copy, so this was perfect. Because I'm interested in reading the prequel. I think it's about Atticus. I can just guarantee that I did not appreciate this the way it's supposed to be when I was like a freshman in high school reading it. So I definitely want to revisit this now that my prefrontal cortex has developed and all that good stuff. Two books that Shelby gave me when she was shuffling around books she was getting rid of. The first one is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle. I know very little about this other than it's about King Henry VIII and I am a fan of Six the Musical and I did go see the Tower of London this summer. I'm interested in this kind of thing. I think this might be a fiction. Yeah, it's a novel. It won the Man Booker in 2009. Again, I don't read too much historical fiction so we'll see how this goes. And then the other book I stole from Shelby is The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek by Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning. I do not expect this to be good. This is not my typical genre. I know it's gonna be corny and awful, but I'm just so curious. I love their show and I watch them all the time. I'm gonna try that one out. And then I just have two final ones that I just got. I typically do not get Christmas presents that are books because my family is like, you're good, clearly. But my sister actually picked me up all nine godforsaken books in the Bridgerton series. I did read the first one earlier this year and absolutely loved it, devoured it. I won't go into this again, but it's one of my comfort watches on Netflix and it makes me laugh and it makes me cry. Even though there's parts of it that clearly are dated. I love Julia Quinn's writing style and the characters that she made are just like, ugh. like, are you joking? Are you joking? I do plan on rereading the first one and then reading and annotating and loving all of these. And finally, while I was at my parents' house for Christmas, I stole this from my mom. I think she mentioned she wanted this back, but I don't think that's gonna happen. What do y'all know about the gift of fear? Which is all about the instinct of like fight or flight, how to survive men and crime and violence by those instincts that we have. And I am very much someone who's afraid to say no and I want to people please. So I think this is gonna be important for me and I know a lot of people have read this, have recommended it. I don't know why I have a copy that looks like a business bro would have this on his desk at work, but it was free. <laughs> Other than like a couple of miscellaneous books that again, I probably am not as excited about that I got from either a library book sale or little free libraries. That's it for 2023. Hi dude. This is the time where I tell you, thank you for watching. If there's anything I've talked about here that you have read and I haven't, please let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what your top purchases of the year were or maybe just good things you got for Christmas. And that's it. Bye friends.